Hello, Hambini fans. Is that it? Okay. I've done it. That might Wait, do you know what fucking time it is? 4.15 in the morning. You two clowns have woken me up at 4.15 just to be here. Do you expect you me volunteered to for, so You volunteered 4am. This is your idea. Because you said you've got yourself. to go and milk the cows or milk the milkman. I can't remember which one you said. Right. I think it was milk the prostate you said. <laughs> Joe's opened a beer. All right. I've got a beer. Hambini, what have you got? Apart from a hard on. Water. Water. <laughs> Uh, right, yeah, we're going to rate some stuff uh, from seriously uncool, uncool, cool, and then sub zero, which is like cooler than Ernest Shackleton's fossilized penis. Uh, it's like, like liquid nitrogen, or like my shirt. Yeah. So actually, yeah, if you have any suggestions about, about shirt. my shirt, you can put that on as well. So uh, we're going to go around a few suggestions from us all, and then we're going to take some from the audience, which I put on YouTube a couple of weeks ago. Uh, obviously, thanks for all your suggestions. There were way too many to put in, so I just had to pick a couple of random ones and some that are going to ruffle a few feathers, which which we like to see. So, who's going to start us off? Who's first? On the cool wall. I think a pretty cool thing are BB30 bottom bracket. Can I just wave, wave my white flag already? I'm seriously out engineered here, but come on, bring it on. So, the reasons I like BB30 are basically. Uh, if you if you're after your lightest bike as a yeah. system, I think yeah. I think BB30 with an, a specific BB30 crank is your lightest setup. So me being the the market dominant one, because I am, I uh, I think it's fantastic as well. I am totally in agreement with Joe. Okay, Hambini, you haven't really got the concept of the cool. Wheel. You're supposed to basically slate everyone's suggestions, but okay. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> it's absolutely shit. Okay, shame, good. Man. No, back on form. If it was we're any good, form. yeah. If it was, if it was any yeah. good, then you wouldn't um, be in business. Joe, Joe's employer would use it, and he doesn't. So they've got brains. Yeah. Can we actually just so, uh, before we get on to BB30, can we actually just realise like what's happening here? So Hambini and myself are quite anti-marketing, and then we've got the head of marketing for a bike company who's double <clears> a <throat> who's double agented himself into this chat. Well, actually, we should rephrase that to two different things, I think, me being the engineering connoisseur that I am. There's the bearing. There's actually nothing wrong with the bearing because it's been in production since 1920-something. But all of these manufacturers can't machine a round hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's the big basic problem. Well, I think, you know, uh, SRAM in their genius, whatever reason they have, of keep, trying to keep the key. Did you actually say <laughs> it's bold? It's bold. It's bold. <laughs> right, so we just shut him down? I've tried just to shut this... Okay, so BB30, as a standard, has potential, right? So I don't know why they make the, like, the SRAM Red BB30 cranks. The crank arms, like, bow out. Like, yeah. They could have kept well, them uh, in. They could have kept the them potential. in. potential. Still would have cleared the chain stays. Yeah. Like, uh, but you need a key factor. Then, okay. Why? I'm tiny. My hips are yeah, like this wide. Not everyone like designs bikes for four foot ten people, Joe. So like, come on. The bending moment on the bearings like fifty cent bigger than than they would be on a PF eighty six. They're too narrow. And chain well, stays. Marketing managers got to understand that bending moment. I do agree that when you when your bearings are closer together, yeah. Then like you know you you've got to be more accurate. Oh yeah, chain the the, the bike becomes sixty mil wide at the bottom bracket, so you have got no no tire clearance. It's bullshit. But Seeing as you know, you were brave enough to do the first one and get your neck out on the line to get slaughtered, you can have it. We'll, we'll leave it as cool. But for the viewers watching, I'm not, yeah. every week or whenever we do the next episode, there can be housekeeping. So the, this is a dynamic policy, right? It can move. But for now, we'll let him, we'll let him have that. We'll, we'll leave it in cool. Um, I've got one next and I really hate and despise roof racks and i'm saying seriously uncool and you might think why roof racks why, what's wrong with the roof rack why can't i put my bike on the roof or on the back of the car well let me begin so roof racks are for idiots because most people that have a roof rack or a bike rack on the back of the car seemingly have a massive car anyway like a four by four an suv if you're american sports utility vehicle or a wagon like an estate car, touring, whatever. So they've got shitloads of space inside the car, yet they decide to put their nice, clean, 
well looked after road bike or whatever on the rack it gets covered in shit it gets air abraded by grit on the motorway at 100 kilometers an hour and most of the time you see these blokes mainly blokes driving around in these huge vehicles with a bike on the roof there's no one else in the fucking car so put the bike in the car like why wouldn't you do that and then people say oh well you know i've got kids the kids and stuff and their, their shit has to go in the car well i hate to break it to you but if you've got kids your FTP has pretty much gone as far south as it ever will. Just leave the bike at home. Don't try and go cycling with your kids on holiday. It's going to be shit. You're going to resent having children. You're going to resent having a wife and impregnating her to spawn. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you're just not good. You're going to basically curse them the whole bike ride. So put your feet up on holiday. Leave the bikes at home. Put the children in the car. That's like the, the few percentage of cyclists that have children that are able to spawn because most cyclists just won't get laid. So they're going to be single anyway. So there's literally no reason to have a bike rack. So just like put the bike in the car. It's going to stay dry. It's going to be protected. Oh, God. Um, yeah, like, and, you know, one of my best mates, Chris, if you're watching, don't put your bike on the roof rack. You've got an Audi A4 Touring. Your baby is probably a small enough to fit in the glove box. Like, just put the bike in the boot, man. <laughs> yeah? Okay. You guys can argue that, but you're going to be wrong. It's seriously uncool to have a bike rack. I think the, the, the bigger argument was you basically said all cyclists were impotent and... Um, well, it depends on your bike fit. <laughs> and uh, can't get laid. I just, I just lost it there. I don't, I don't know what else to add. Right, so there's literally no defence. What, what, what about... What about if the bike on the roof is worth more than the car? Is that like cool? Ooh, what car have you got? That's that's a good one. So you're basically like showing off. It's like wearing a Rolex. Like, yeah, I'm in debt, but I've got a Rolex. That is that sort of thing. Like you're showing off. <laughs> yeah, like an, an S works with like uh, other bikes are available. Uh, an S works with like lightweight wheels. Other wheels are available. Uh, like I think he's a triple like agent. A Reliant Robin. I think he's a triple agent now. He's at, he, he mentions S-Works a lot. I, I kind of understand, but it's still seriously uncool, so it's staying in seriously uncool. Job done. Right. Who's next? Um, what did I actually say? Because obviously I'm the only one in here who doesn't like riding a bike. You don't even ride. Well, everyone ride knows you don't ride a bike, mate, so just crack on. Uh, I don't think I've ever been pictured anywhere riding a bike, even though it's a bicycle YouTube Right, channel. so what are you, what are you claiming? Um, that I'm an idiot, m m mainly. Right, um, what did I say? Oh, your hair is seriously uncool. My hair? Yes. Okay. Shots fired. Shots fired. Explain yourself. Well, basically, you being an engineer, yeah. you have to have a certain haircut. Right. And Are you saying seriously uncool? Can I just... Seriously, I'm cold. Right. And and you and you haven't got one. What do you mean? I just don't have hair, or I don't have a haircut. Well, it's it's you know it's. Wow. Well, I don't know. Right. I've added. It's, it's, I've I've made a little thing for the cool wall now, which is basically a picture of me and the word saying hair, so people can understand what you're talking about. Because Hambini didn't send us his uh, suggestions in advance, okay, everyone? So I'm doing this, like, on the fly, so it's a bit clunky. Only Joe and I pre-prepared. I, I have a good counterpoint I for, for Hambini, yeah. if, if, I'm, if I'm going. And it also proves another point. So it proves that when marketers write whatever they want on the website, no one reads anything. Uh, for the past, like, year and a half on the Winspace website, the photo of uh, Peak Talk next to it has said, uh, voted most handsome YouTuber uh, by the Winspace office staff, like 2021. Oh. Well, no, for an engineer, I would say Mate, your hair I had, is I had, white. I had Back yellow hair for a while. I know, and I dished you constantly for well, it. Well, at least it was a bit out there. You know, loud, just like Lego fucking man again. <laughs> just sort of, sort of a black line drawn around the edge. All right, my hair yeah, needs to stay. Okay, I'm fine with it because I wear a helmet. <clears throat> What sort of helmet? <laughs> Someone else's Someone helmet. Else's helmet. <laughs> and whilst they're being teabagged. <clears throat> oh, right. dear. 
Oh, All right, my hair. What, what time is it? It's four thirty. My hair can stay in seriously uncool, and but you know that's just going to prompt me to do something bizarre again, like dye it yellow. So who knows what I'm going to do now? Have I, have I, have I prompted self insecurity? Yeah. Is oh, this... I, that I could add that to my rap sheet of like caning everybody, getting into trouble, and all sorts. Right. Is this not the pot calling the kettle black, or we're we not allowed to say that in 2022? Ah, come on, yeah, come at me. Road disc brakes are so uncool. Like, wait, wait, seriously, are you seriously, uncool? seriously uncool or uncool? Because we need to populate the uncool aside a little bit. No, seriously uncool. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not giving. Any oh, chance. seriously uncool. Seriously okay. Uncool. Road disc brakes. Seriously uncool. Sorry. Controversial. Explain yourself. Sorry to throw a throw a spanner in the works. So your mountain bikes and all your big your big wheels with big grip or whatever. Yeah, go for it. But. I think on a rim brake bike, going down the steepest hill you want, you slam on the brakes, you're either going to run out of traction on the rear wheel first, oh, or you're going to lock up the front here wheel. Here we go, we've had all this. Go yeah, straight traction over the handlebars. with the tyres. Yeah, like what's cool about flying over the handlebars? Well, you weigh about as much as a Walker's Crisp, Joe, so, you know, you may not need this. I agree, but some of the brands are available. They are. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, to, to count at this point, most people's, like, their grip strength, their squeezing strength, probably scales. We're like, getting into pretty... funny territory, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Do you caress the lever? Uh, I oh. usually just give it a good fucking squeezing until it until it either starts squealing or stops. <laughs> that was brilliant. That yeah. was just gold. When the back end starts shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking, <laughs> that's usually where I know that I'm at the, I'm at the edge and I can start... Cool I don't get that back end shaking. Hambini, have you got anything good good things to say about road disc brakes? Because I fear he's going to get an easy ride with this one. Uh, no. I actually have to remind myself <laughs> what we were talking about then. Like, well, I've forgotten yeah. as well. I think I think my inner self is trying not to burst out into absolute uh, speeches and laughter. Okay, let me make a case for a road disc. The, let me make, let comments, me make a case the for the road disc brakes. saying rain, rain, rain. Yeah, I mean, this is an easy one for people to get triggered about, but let me make a co let me make the case for road disc. I can't think of any. Good luck. Um, <laughs> hundred and sixty millimeter. You ride a disc brake bike. Hundred mil. Yeah, I know because you know, mate. When you're like an influencer, yeah, you got to stay up with the fucking trends. Really lightweight, I think, don't need them. And the hundred and sixty millimeter envelope for like fat people or big people like me is too small. It can't deal with the heat. Got a video on this coming very soon. Uh, so yeah, that's my defence for road disc brakes. Seriously, uncool. Trek ISO speed decoupler, in particular the Trek Madone. Now, and I think it's quite rare that they've done something really nicely packaged and innovative to create such a compliant aero bike. Because most aero bikes are just way too stiff. The leaf spring design in this is really neat. It's well packaged, it looks good. You can't even tell it's there from the side. There are no warranty issues with it, as far as I know. And everyone I know has got one, and I've ridden one. It, it's just so comfortable. It adds so much compliance to the back end of the bike. Or should we just say deflection, because I know Ham Hambini hates the word compliance. Um, but yeah, I think it's really good. I think it's sub-zero. What do you guys think? God, Joe, do you want to go first, or shall I go first? Uh, you go first. Give him, give him, your, give him your technical know-how, and I'll give him the, the marketing one too. Well, I think that Pete Talk has just been completely sucked in by the marketing Oof. because everyone knows and really properly sucked in by someone at Trek. Basically, everyone knows in order to go fast, you need to be stiff. Stiff everything, stiff everything, and then go for Hertzian contact stresses on the tyres and then go fast. Because, let's be honest, as soon as you get into a, uh, uh, like a track, you want high tire pressure and high stiffness. If you are trying to say that when you go out onto the road that having something flexible is fast, it's not true, it's wrong. You want it to be as stiff as possible, plus it's not gonna be you know, good for your sperm count. It's staying sub-zero. I've ridden one and it's it's a very comfortable bike and it's aero. But since, since, There's lots of better things when... to ride than a bike. True. This is this since is a cycling channel. Since when was being comfortable cool? Like this is the this is the cool wall, not the I got to the end of my fucking Sunday morning coffee ride without a saddle sore wall. 
I mean, Fairy's oh, point. it's not cool. Like, oh, oh, hello, look at my new bike. I've got an ISO decoupler. It's full of polymer things, and it's got up to three degrees of flex. So after a long day in the saddle, I get to the finish line, and then I'm feeling more relaxed and fresh for the sprint. Like, that's not fucking cool, man. Understood. But if, like we said earlier in the show, like you can't get laid because you're a cyclist, if you're the 5% that can, being able to, like, give your partner, you know, a good going over after your Sunday ride because your nether regions have been looked after, everything's firing, Ooh. blood's still pumping, that's cool. If you have to say, sorry, love, not today, like, I'm a bit sore down on the old Biffin Bridge, that ain't cool. Who says okay. Biffin Bridge yeah. in this day and age? Seriously, <laughs> who says Biffin Bridge? Do, do you not? It's like me when I say crumpet. That, that's just... Sorry, uh, <laughs> You know. yeah. On the basis that the erectile dysfunction is the least cool thing in the world, and that your ISO decoupler can, I don't know if they claim this, can prevent erectile dysfunction disorder, then by this logic, okay, yes, your your ISO decoupler is cool. Yielded. Right, I'm going to go for a controversial one here. Yep. <clears throat> Ceramic bearings, seriously cool. The reason for Ooh. that. The the reason for that is. The only people that use them are, one, loaded, so they must be well-educated, yes. barristers, yes. well-educated, um, and they give you lower friction for the 600 RPM that we're spinning wheels at when every marketing big company says 20,000 minimum. So there must be a, a, a group of people who are very, very intelligent, who are much more intelligent than... MTN, SKF, me, and then other people um, who, who market these things. So based on that, and I also found out that they use ceramic bearings in rampant rabbits. Really? Imported I didn't know that. From, uh, they do. They do. Apparently, it's to reduce corrosion. So we have that. Uh, that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what type of corrosion would that, that be? That's added to I don't know, galvanic maybe? Galvanic, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of electrolytes in those things, isn't there? Sort of fluids and stuff. I don't know. Akin to sweat, isn't it? Or, well, I don't know really. You wouldn't know. Anyway, it's, it's good for... Yeah, well, 40, year old, you... 40 year old virgin over here. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and then you could also Let's... use them for those butt plugs that you were trying to flog last week. Oh, I'm still flogging those. It's proved to be quite a tough sell, the old butt plugs. If you're interested, in a, butt, a peak torque butt plug. This is quite a good time to unveil the peak torque butt plug. Do they come in different sizes? Uh, no. One size fits all. One size reams all. One yeah. size plugged all. Uh, what, what, in, what interference bit are we? Well, here if we have the peak torque logo and a nicely machined bit of stainless. And yeah, here's the peak torque butt plug. Let me know on Instagram if you want to buy one. Um, actually, it's great. The, you know, first function is a butt plug, but second function is a coffee tamper. But, you know, it's not designed for that. Yeah. It's for the yeah, cycling it's coffee people, mate. You know, I'm trying to get in with the marketing and the hipsters. Come on, I'm like trying, oh. I'm trying. God. So, like, you know, coffee, cycling, Rafa, espresso, flat white. Really, lads. Rampant rabbit or, you know, motorised butt plugs. What's the, what's, the, what's the rotational speed of a rampant rabbit? Probably about 50 RPM. Not that I've checked. Uh, yeah. So actually, that is rampant rabbit is too slow for a ceramic bearing handbeam. You should know that. Apparently, you know you're an aerospace. You call yourself an aerospace engineer, but we all know you're a, a dairy farmer because you're up at four. Okay, so let let me let me jump in here and, and represent the average Joe. So I, I understand that y'all tell tell us that. Uh, at high RPMs, ceramic speed is uh, ceramic shit, not ceramic speed. Ceramic bearings <laughs> are superior to steel. Now, what magic happens somewhere along the RPM curve where, like, the friction changes between steel and ceramic? Who can who can tell us why? I've never understood the why. Oh, maybe we need to ask one of the big, oh, sorry, minuscule bearing suppliers that sell it. Like, I'm trying to think. Well, but I can think here. of very like very few things other than like when there's no air resistance involved there's very few things that where like when you're going up the graph of like speed or rpm to resistance yeah like why would the two suddenly cross over like or is it just a durability thing or what 
as soon as you start a ceramic bearing up, then it starts to wear into the softer material. So after a few hundred meters, well, a few hundred kilometers, it's it's just like, shit. I'm speaking the truth. Fuck, I've got out of character. Yeah. Yeah, ceramic bearings can stay cool. Uh, how many reckons they're in rampant rabbits? I mean, Princess Diana had one, and she's cool. So let's let's crack on. <laughs> she is she is ice cool. Yeah. Uh, right now we're going to take a few from the audience, which I put out on uh, Shitstagram a couple of weeks ago or something. Um, this is quite a contentious subject because obviously Joe's a marketeer. Uh, one from the audience. We've got gravel bikes. Okay, no, 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 not gravel bike, sorry. Gravel everything, says Horea T from Romania. And he does say flame war warning, uh, Horea T. Thanks for warning us. Gravel everything is the label. Seriously uncool. Gravel riding is nothing new. There is no such thing as gravel. Shoes, gravel geometry, gravel wheels, gravel jackets, and gravel saddles, gravel etc. And... I'm tempted to agree with that. If you live in some, you know, huge state in the flatlands of the USA and many of the roads are gravel tracks and you actually need to go on those roads or like in the outback or something, if you need to get on those roads to go somewhere, then by virtue you are gravel riding. But I really don't think it you need a gravel jacket or a gravel so, saddle to do that. You just ride your fucking bike, don't you? You just do it like on a mountain bike or a pub bike or a town bike. You just just get on with it. So my justification for gravel and my and my love for gravel is I, I hate the term, but the term is being underbiked. But I think you two can relate to the term. Like it's more fun to ride to drive a slow car fast than to drive a fast car slow, right? Like if you've got a fucking Ferrari Enzo and you just go around the fucking M25 like at 70 miles an hour, that's bollocks, right? But if you've got like an old Toyota A86 or like the newer version, the BRZ, or whatever like small engine small tires like no grip like but you can fucking wring the fucking bollocks off it around the track like that is the shit so uh, you get a trail yeah, like a single track where yeah. a, a cross-country bike could just destroy it like you, know, you don't, don't have to think you just cycle suspension takes care of everything blah, blah, blah. but you go down that same track on a gravel bike and it's like you got no grip you're being fucking bounced around you're fucking holding on to the bike like it's it's a it's a rush but so you can say, oh, then why don't you do it on a road bike? I think that's when the slow the, the slow car gets too slow. Like that would be like fucking driving a milk cart around the uh, around the Nurburgring. Like I can, driving a milk cart around the Nurburgring, no one's gonna have fun yet. I complain, but, like, I, driving a slow car fast is more fun than driving a fast car slow. So what you're trying to say is, uh, I disagree. I'd still rather have a Ferrari Enzo than a gravel bike, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I will agree that like what he says about having gravel shoes and gravel this and gravel even this cock wank of a leaf lauf sorry front suspension fork I didn't sorry. say you could plug uh, Windspace like, or other bike brands in this show <laughs> I mean what like to me the joy is being underbiked so then trying to fucking shoehorn things into it like fucking this front suspension to try and make it compete with cyclocross is absolute bollocks so i'll agree with him that like gravel shoes and gravel saddle and gravel tires is bollocks all right so by what you just said why don't you just do the little gravel track single track thing on your if you want to be on the bikes and you know shit your pants when you're riding down the trail why don't you just take your road bike? because <laughs> there's a limit right like oh okay said, he's like... backtracking now so you want some no, grip it's, it's... you want some grip and safety but you don't want too much but you don't want too little Mate, you're yeah, what's I wrong with you. the world. You're what's wrong with the world, yeah? All you people, <laughs> you just can't be satisfied. You just can't take what you have and just get on with it. You're like, oh, a, uh, I don't want a fat tyre, but I don't want a road tyre because, you know, I won't have enough side knobs and traction. It's uncool, mate. It's, it's fun to drive a slow car fast. Well, um, what car have you got, Joe? I, I have a, a Honda XRV, which is, I think it's called the HRV in, in the UK. Fucking dad life SUV. Sounds like some sort of oh. sexual transmitted infection. Oh, no, that's <laughs> HPV. Well, I've got a Honda said... Civic. So I, 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 I'm. Sorry, what? What, what are you like? Which... Uh, Honda Civic. Which, which one? The diesel F one. Oh, the, the, uh... oh, I love diesels. Can't beat them. Diesel one. So good for the environment. Well. 
Nah, 9,000 9, RPM, bounce off the limit. And then considering, you know, <laughs> people, oh, we're going to get so many woke people in the comments saying, oh, you should eat <laughs> electric vehicles and, you know, you know, don't use fuels that aren't renewable. Well, the way I look at it, like, they're not renewable, so you might as well use them up, right? The fossil fuels. <laughs> What, what why, are we leaving, you? why are we leaving Brilliant. them around? That is a great argument. Yeah, I mean, so that's that one put to bed. <laughs> Electric vehicles are also uncool. Swift is... Uh, okay, oh, that, I just We haven't broke. spoke about my Honda Civic yet. Okay, carry on about your Honda uh, Civic. About, going on about Joe's point about um, uh, having a shit car and driving it to the max versus a fast car and driving <clears> it slowly. Well, I've got a car that's, I would say, the thinking man's car in the middle. I, I I only bought it as a thinking man for tax reasons more than anything else. So you got but, a van, commercial vehicle. Well, that that that's for the uh, the, the plumbing side of the business. Oh, I yeah, thought we've you were a chav with a Focus ST or a Focus RS or some shit. I thought you had the chav the chavy Fords going down. No, I think that one got scrapped because he crashed it. Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that. I, I had a, an injury to my knob. Right. Anyway. We do have three bike channels, right? Not three car channels. Anyway, we'll, 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 yeah, we're just taking a bit of inspiration. Right, is it my one, Nick? Um, um, I'm, I'm yeah, this is going to be the last one. This is going to be the last one. So, Hanvini, you can take the last one. Bonus one for you. Right. Zwift. Uh, I'm going to say... Right, Zwift. The first thing is the health benefits of Zwift. So, Wait. all those people... Are you saying it's cool or uncool? I said it was cool. Okay. Did I not say it was cool? Cool. Okay, we're putting Zwift in. Cool. Cool. Right. The re the reason we, we is. The... Well, I haven't done my argument yet. Right. Anyway, so Zwift, the health benefits of Zwift. So first of all, we make fat people thinner. So apologies in the um, the woke comments if you think I'm being fattest, but let's be honest. Everyone associates me with um, just general abuse, so I might as well not stop there. So, yes, it makes fat people thinner, mm. which is good for the NHS because, you know, all the, the normal bike companies pay all their taxes. <laughs> then we, we have the, the media influencing, which will start off with all those E-grade celebrities, influencers on Zwift who televise their rides and people watch it on youtube so there's the commercial benefit and then finally the scandal element which is when cameron jeffers got busted for cheating so oh. all in all it's cool cameron jeffers is also cool there's going to be less like fat people out and about therefore having there's less chance of of you getting laid basically you're gonna have more competition <laughs> and you need all the help you can get mate <laughs> Tell me if Coming I'm from you in the banana t-shirt. Anyway, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning milking people's prostates. What are you doing at 12 in the midday? When you're a cyclist, you need to keep those fluids like circulating, otherwise it's like an old radiator. If you don't turn it on in ages, it's gonna block. I mean, you ride your bike, don't you? Bike, bikes are made for transport for going A to B. I think it's uncool. I mean, there are better things to do indoors than ride a stationary bike in an imaginary race while sweating and looking like a complete knob. To the rest of your family. Yeah, but you won't get Omicron. <laughs> Don't say that too loud. TP will come and castrate you. <laughs> the answer to Zwift is just like man the fuck up. Like, go outside. If everyone who's watching, like whether he's alive or dead, everyone's watching has a granddad. And your granddad, if he saw you riding your fucking static trainer because it's a bit cold outside and it's wet. He'd tell, you to, he'd tell you about when he was a lad and he used to walk to school uphill and then walk home uphill as well. And you're there in your fucking Ponce indoor trainer. Like, you, yeah. he'd slap you around the ear. So just get out on your fucking bike and just ride outside. And, you know, think of the health benefits. I've mentioned the health benefits, which you, you know, reduce the weight, reduce the uh, propensity of fat people, reduce the, um, the cost to the NHS so that Rishi Sunak can spend his money on funding Tory peers to get peerages and all that shit. Whereas, uh, you know, what, 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 that, that's, the, that's the, the whole argument of it. Zwift, this commercial This might be like the most sensible perfection. thing Hambini has ever said. I think if it, gets, if it gets more people on bikes, it's good. But if it gets more people who were on the road, off the road, then I don't think it's cool. Yeah, I think, I think, I think you're right, Joe. I think that's what's happening. Like, if you look at something I'm going to say quite sensible, first time in this podcast, if you took a group ride 
I remember like a club ride in the UK in the winter in January, maybe about eight years ago. There'd be 20 guys out, mud guards, all the kit, and everyone's women, smiling. And Let's not forget the women. Everyone's smiling, everyone's having a laugh, there's salt everywhere, there's like cow poo that's been liquidised by rain in everyone's face. <laughs> everyone's having a great time, and it's grim, but it's cool. Now, a club ride in the UK, you might go out in the January, there's like two people there, some old dudes who are literally like having a fucking great time, all the other young pussies like us, well me and Joe, not you and Beanie, are inside on Zwift, <laughs> doing structured workouts. I mean, the first two, two minutes of a, of a shitty winter ride, are crap but if you think back to your most memorable rides they're, they've all been when it's been absolutely dismal weather yeah like, it just makes it makes stories it makes it like epic and and that's a marketing word epic all right because you know we've all had our fair share of legal threatenings we'll leave it in cool but that's the only reason <laughs> right do we have anything to say to the punters i think thanks for watching if you disagree or agree we can do a bit of housekeeping next next time. Let me know in the comments section below. Uh, cheers, thanks for coming. On that bombshell. Back to the studio. Back to oh. the studio.